diagram here? See. We're going to find small intestine in one. It's a tenth of a soon from the base of the nail on the ulnar side of the fifth finger. Okay, that's the Jingwell point. Then the next point that we'll find is going to be SI3, the shoestream point, and it's confluent with the governing vessel meridian. So this point is just going to be proximal to the distal head of the fifth um, metacarpal here. And what you do is you just get in between the muscle and the bone for this acupressure point. And then I hook back towards the um, head of the fifth metacarp metacarpal for this point. And this point's indicated distally for shoulder um, neck pain. It's also indicated for acute low back pain because it's confluent with a governing vessel meridian. Now the next point we find is SI6, the Z cleft point for acute conditions. This would be the sort of thing where someone, you know, you know, had a acute injury, um, or also sometimes people will wake up and so they've slept plenty on their neck and can't really rotate their head. There's a lot of pain. This would be a good distal point to use. And so here's the styloid. You see this white whitish area? That's a styloid process um, of the ulnar bone. So I'm going to have you start there. Then the direction is just move slightly superior and then medial. And that will get you to the bony cleft in uh, on the styloid process. And then what you do from there is you're going to turn out and then turn back in and then pull. And that's where you'll catch the um, acupressure point SI6. Oh, yeah. So if you just go and you press into it like that, you're not going to really be on the point. You have to turn and turn back. That's how you really get um, more on the acupressure point. Okay, and then I'll have you face down on the table, please. So the next point that we have is going to be SI9. And so what I work this point, I recommend just hanging the, you know, hanging the arm off the, the table. And for SI9, if it, well, if the arm's on the table, so here's the axillary fold. So the, the idea is you're pushing the bottom soon up and in toward the axillary fold, towards the lateral um, edge of the upper scapula in a teres, more teres minor. But I think it's easier when you're first finding to find it uh, with the arm hanging over the side. And just go to the axillary fold, basically. And then you're going to just find the upper edge of the lateral border of the scapula. That's SI9. Most people will have a hard spot here at this acupressure point. If you're working it with the arm on the table, same thing. It's going to be right here. Okay, so from there, we're going to go to SI10. So SI9 is here. Now SI10 is going to be, the books say, directly above it. You know, you don't have to take it literally. And remember where my mark is here. I have to push in pretty deep. So the, the where I'm actually pushing, when I'm pushing through, is more here. So if I go from this mark and go straight up, I'll be way off the acupressure point. So you have to remember that if you're looking at where your mark was for SI10. The point's actually here, so SI10 is going to be up here because I'm pushing in where my mark is. So here's 9. And 10, what you do is you can palpate for the spine of the scapula. And here's the chromium process. And there's a ridge, an upward curvature you can feel in the bone just on the inside of the chromium process on the spine of the scapula. And this point's right here. That's SI10. And then from there, we're going to have SI11. SI11 is in the center of the scapula or a third of the distance from the spine of the scapula towards the inferior angle, or you can go from SI9 and just move inward. I think that's the easiest way. If you go to SI9, because SI9 is here, and you just move medial, start palpating, you'll run into the SI11. So SI11 is right here, in the center of infraspinatus. And then from there, we're going to go to SI12. SI12, the books say, is directly above SI11, but don't take it literally. What you're going to do is palpate for the spine of the scapula, and you want to be superior to the spine of the scapula, so above it in the supraspinous fossa. And here's the spine of the scapula, and I have his 11 as being here. Let's see, his 12 is actually going to be right in here. So don't take it literally that it's going to be directly above. It just depends on people's bodies and how their shoulders are how the um, scapula shoulder is rotated. So that's his SI12. And then next we have SI13. So 13, you just find the medial superior border of the scapula. I can feel the cup I was talking about 
Um, you have a little Vader scapula coming through. And then the point's right here. So that says SI13. And then if you're going to work, usually I work this point bilaterally. And just lean your body weight in. I really recommend when you work these small intestine points, a lot of times I see students, you know, trying to work them. They're coming back here for 13 and trying to like work like this and pull back into it. It's a really awkward position and you don't have good use of your body weight. Um, you know, for SI11, SI9, usually you just come in on the side, but 10, 11, 12, and 13 are all easier to work with your body weight from this angle. Okay, now if you face up for the last point, Brian. The last point is going to be SI19. So 19, here's the tragus of his ear. And basically, you're going right in front of that, and then you have the client open slightly, and then you can feel the space in, in between the... Um, the uh, epicondyle of the mandible. So that's SI19. Okay, so those are the points that we'll find.